On January 20th, 2022, Virgil Abloh's final runway presentation for Louis Vuitton went live. This is very literally the end of an era. Virgil's vision touched millions of people around the world and he inspired all of us to go after our own creative vision. The final presentation was bursting with references, narrative and just some flat out beautiful imagery. Normally on this channel, I do runway analyses to help uncover the artfulness of designers work. But for this episode, I want to turn the keys over to you all. This episode is a group analysis. Every day for a week on my Instagram stories, I posted looks from the runway, sections of the show notes, detailed shots, and questions. Then you all replied to these stories with your thoughts, tributes, and interpretations of this, Virgil's closeout show at Louis Vuitton. This episode is very literally brought to you by you. And I do want to restate the, the same way that I did in the tribute video to Virgil's life that um, I, I don't think that Virgil would want us to get together like this and be sad. We all miss him a ton, obviously, but I'm the one with the microphone, so I kind of feel obligated to keep the mood in this video the way that Virgil would have wanted it, which I think is joyful. So we are going to celebrate this man's life by getting excited about something that he was always really excited about. Let's start with look one. A lot of people pointed out that we begin the show with a funeral look. This is significant because many runway shows often end with bridal looks, but starting with a funeral look is not common at all, and here holds some very obvious connotation. One person said, quote, I immediately started tearing up when this first model came out. We all knew what this one look meant. Yeah. But there's a lot more here. Most notably, we see this accessory of a spider on the model's ear. So we have two things here. This is actually pretty cool. The first is that this is Anansi, an Akan folklore character that's common in present-day Ghana, where Virgil's family comes from. Anansi is the god of all knowledge and of stories, and is best known for his ability to outsmart and triumph over more powerful opponents through his use of cunning, creativity, and wit. That's a very fitting narrative here, right? There's also the possibility of this being a reference to the spider sculptures by modern artist Louise Bourgeois. Those were often a way for her to talk about her mother. Despite what you might think at first glance, that wasn't just a bad thing. This wasn't a way for her to like diss her mom or anything. So maybe this is a loving reference to Mrs. Abloh. And also if we just look at the shape of this look, we can see a clear silhouette reference to Christian Dior's bar jacket. Okay, a mega crazy note here that someone pointed out is that in the, uh, the original show notes from 1947 that Christian Dior put out, he talked about this being the number eight silhouette. So this runway show is Virgil's eighth for Louis Vuitton. It's show number eight. And the show is titled The Infinite Fear. Okay, so listen, this is why I love doing these group analyses so much. You all, when, when everyone puts their heads together, y'all are able to come up with some incredible stuff that I would have just never caught on my own. This is so much fun. A massive part of this collection that cannot be ignored is the music. For many people, this was the highlight of the show for several different reasons, most notably for the inclusion of Tyler, the creator. Tyler, along with Yasin Bey, provided all of the music for the show, and Tyler even appeared riding his bike in the runway at the end. If this wasn't a YouTube video, I would be playing the music for you right now because the score for this show was just beautiful. But the symbolic placement of Tyler seemed to strike a chord with many of you. One person put it very succinctly. He said, quote, in an interview, Tyler mentions how important Virgil was in getting the luxury side of golf started. I can kind of see LVMH acquiring Golf Le Fleur and making Tyler the creative director of LV. He might be very new to luxury design and people could say that he needs more experience, but I feel like he would learn very quickly. Also, the hug between him and Yasin Bey at the end was so reminiscent of the Yay Virgil hug. I don't know, maybe I'm looking too deep into it. Nonsense! That's my whole job is looking too deeply into things. These are some like incredible thoughts here. That was such a good way of putting it. And that honestly would be absolutely crazy if Tyler took over for Virgil. I don't know, is that something that seems plausible to you all? Is that something that you would want to see? That seems like a good thing to discuss in the comments. Go do that. On top of that, some of the jackets in this collection bore a pretty good resemblance to a golf jacket. And the Louis Vuitton trunks that have the climbing holds attached to them strongly resemble Tyler's collaboration with the luggage brand Globetrotter. Tyler is undeniably a centerpiece in this show, and the show notes do specify that this presentation is meant to be a passing of the torch. Look 2 continues with another similar shape and color, now with leather floral arrangements furthering the funeral theme. But there's also these sneakers where the soles resemble the t Hang on, I do not know how to pronounce that. Tympanum, tympanum, tympanum. They look like the tympanum on the front of Gothic churches, which often tell a story about the afterlife. One person said, quote, it might relate to the story of the entire show because the ideas of heaven on earth is something that Virgil is talking about in all of his shows. 
And on that note, a crazy thing to note about the show generally is that the cover of the show notes are a gradient between red and purple. Red being the first color of the rainbow, purple being the final color of the rainbow. It's the full journey of life. We'll see that theme of the full journey explored a lot more as we continue moving here. Look 5 had this incredible comment. They said, quote, This looks like the bottom of a skateboard from the early 2000s. Like, all the different stickers and vibes and colors combined on the bottom of the deck, and it shouldn't work, but it does. Someone else had this incredible comment where they said that this looks like Virgil's DJ career, taking disparate pieces and adding them together into a cohesive whole that's unexpected, the essence of DJing. We also had an actual Louis Vuitton employee who pointed out that this might be the first pink bag that's ever been offered from men by Louis Vuitton. Virg was a man of firsts. Look Six had this incredible comment where they said, quote, I don't think people can even begin to understand how crazy it is that we are watching a black model walk down the runway of the biggest luxury house in the world with basketball shorts under his pants. Just realizing how crazy it is that Virgil so beautifully highlighted black fashion and nuances. And we had a ton of comments about the paint buckets that they were carrying. I could only include a few here, but my favorites were when uh, someone pointed out that Virgil's father actually managed a paint company. And another comment saying, the paint bucket to me is screaming to the world, fashion is art. Many people view art as painting and not much else. This is Virgil's way of expressing to the masses that art isn't just paintings, but also clothing, bags, etc. And someone else was like, this can't be a coincidence. This has to be a reference to the beginning of Saturday Night Fever. Look 8 had a lot of guesses, but I really liked the one that suggested that this is an interdepartmental envelope closure. (laughs) They just said, if he has a master's degree, he definitely knows about these. (laughs) In look 11, we had a little bit of a theme open up with the headwear. Some observers noted that this looks an awful lot like the work of Matthew Williams, who was definitely Virgil's friend. They kind of came up together, so possibly a little bit of a tribute and a goodbye to his friend. The headwear throughout got a lot of really interesting comments. We had one person suggest that this is Max from Where the Wild Things Are. I'm including this. And that reminded me that my dad, my dad collects figurines, and I'm just going to put that right there. This is like my favorite book as a kid. But Max is such a perfect embodiment of letting your imagination go crazy. Max imagines a new world and then lives through a wild adventure there. We also got some comparisons to Finn the Human from the greatest television show of all time, Adventure Time. And basically all the stuff that I said about Max applies to Finn as well. Later on in the show, we see a multitude of purple looks. Someone suggested that all the purple is due to Virgil and Louis Vuitton's relationship with the K-pop band BTS. Purple is the color of BTS and specifically the BTS army. Look 13 is the first of many to show trunks with the Louis monogram blurred out. Of this, someone said, quote, based on the show notes, maybe to me, the blur shows the unspoiled perspective of the child, like seeing the LV monogram and not associating it with wealth or status. The blur reflects the eyes simply passing over it and moving on. And I love that. That's such a great way of putting it. Other people said that this kind of related to the dreamlike state of a lot of the show where, you know, in your dreams, if you're trying to look at something really closely, your your brain won't quite let you make out the details and it's almost like your eyes can't quite focus on it. Another person said that they were very reminiscent of the mischief blurred dollar and that it also plays a lot with the idea of fakes and duplicates. Look 15 strongly reminded folks of four things. These cups, Formula One drivers, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Aqua Jordan 8s. Which honestly is not like a far-fetched combo for Virgil. I feel like if he was here and heard that interpretation, like even if it wasn't true, he would be like, that does sound like me. (laughs) Another person gave a really great interpretation that to me sounds very plausible. They said, quote, this has to be a reference to the 90s cycle windbreaker jackets, which became really popular in the Netherlands when I grew up. First, everyone would wear them to football games, but then the Gabber movement adopted the jackets, stuff like Dutch speed core. This is a niche genre of dance music, by the way. The jackets represent a really big part of that rave culture in the 90s for me. Virgil honestly loved rave culture history. All five of these readings sound dead on to me. Look 16 had a ton of great stuff. Someone said, uh, quote, literally every black grandmother has black angels in her home. I love how he incorporates our culture in high fashion. Another person said, cherubs are the guardians of heaven's doors. Virgil was providing the template for what's possible. And we also had a reminder that this is strangely reminiscent of the original Good Music logo, which Virgil designed. Finally, written on the hat, Matier is French for trunk maker. Moving on, someone said that this, quote, cleverly ties into the exploration of childhood objects and themes. Climbing 
climbing gyms are often experienced for the first time as birthday parties. For people who don't climb, a birthday party might be the only reason they'd ever enter a climbing gym. There's also a mention of an exploration into sporting and the Olympics in the show notes that is super neat because competition rock climbing was just introduced into the Summer Olympics last year. Another person pointed out he directly references those bags in the show notes. His idea was representing the climb to heaven, which actually is kind of somber in hindsight because Virgil was making his last collection. It almost feels like his acceptance of his condition, which is just heartbreaking. Yes, it is. There's a great reading here about Virgil's use of classical art, which he has a long history of doing. Quote, in the original painting, the group of common people of everyday life are on the left and Courbet's elite friends are on the right. These are to depict his influences, influences on him as an artist. Though both groups seem to be divided, they are strung together by Courbet, the artist. And that is, I mean, it's perfect. That summarizes like, what Virgil was as an artist to the public. Someone else said, quote, my favorite thing I noticed, which gave me actual joy when I realized is a little detail of the painter's working hand with the brush being depicted on the actual arm of the model slash sleeve. Meaning the wearer is wearing Virgil's clothes, but he too has the power to create something with his hand. It's that same idea that Virgil posted when he did his first show at Louis Vuitton, saying, you can do it too. Okay, so in look 19, there was kind of a weird realization. One person said, quote, I love the selection of art, but I just hate this material. It looks like gas station hoodie material. So I read that and I thought, that does kind of look like that. Where have I seen this before? It looks really familiar. And then I realized that this looks like all of those custom like one of one Instagram accounts where they like print something from an anime onto a hoodie. This is that same idea that is done then in a luxury context. So I think this person was like maybe trying to like diss this look, but I don't know. I, I find that actually be a really stellar reference. So good job guy, you made a really good catch there. Okay, okay, one more, one more for this look. Quote, this is a replica of a painting telling a very white, very European European story that's featured mostly on models of color and designed by a designer of color. To me, it calls out how antiquated our perception of the arts are. Also, they kind of look like camouflage. Love that. Shout out Janet. She's the best. Get well soon, Janet. Moving right along to look 33, which is a radically different look than the rest of the show. I kind of thought it didn't really fit well with the rest of it until someone suggested that it's a reference to the Damien Hirst piece called Who's Afraid of the Dark? which is a black acrylic primed canvas that's covered in dead house flies and resin. Among many other interpretations, this piece somberly reminds us of death. And I mean, speaking of which, a lot of people pointed out that this model appears to be crying. Yeah, man. I feel that. We had a great comment about the luggage in look 41. Quote, see-through bag. Usually those kind of peg you as a retail employee. They make you bring see-through bags to work so you can't steal anything. I think Virgil is taking a walk of life that many don't think of as very glamorous and plugging in an undeniably luxurious bag into that context. That is a great reading. Wouldn't it be sick if I could do a group analysis like this and then recruit a bunch of fashion analyzers and create a fashion think tank? Join the Patreon so that we can start a fashion utopia, please. Seriously though, if you if you like doing this, this isn't like in the script or anything, but if you like doing stuff like this, this is like what we do all day long in the Discord. You should definitely join the Patreon. It, it really is a part in there. Look 45. Quote, the silk slash satin material reminds me of silk do-rags, which is juxtaposed with the suit, the white man's uniform. And the whole thing looks like a reclamation of strength, power, and culture for the black community. One brilliant person who zoomed into look 48 noticed that this is not an eagle as Virgil has used before when referencing black cowboys, but instead a dove with an olive branch in its mouth. Quote, the use of a dove and olive branch as a symbol of peace originated with the early Christians who often used it in conjunction with the act of baptism. And I'm trying to not narrativize too much myself, but I, I just got to throw in that also the, uh, the dove with the olive branch came back to Noah after the flood, and that was when the first rainbow was created. I honestly like your interpretation a little bit better with like the baptism and going to heaven thing that's much more thematic with the, the show here, but the connection of the rainbow, I feel like we at least gotta bring it up. Look 52 is likely inspired by Venetian bottom masks, which were worn by both nobles and peasants to keep in total anonymity. The lower part of the mask even leaves a space open so that you could consume food and drinks without having to take it off. Also, maybe likely that it's plague doctor masks that would have a pretty clear tie-in with the pandemic. Okay team, we're gonna move forward to the finale of the show, which uh, has the pretty heartbreaking theme of everyone looking like angels. These seem to be inspired by the Sephirim 
in the Bible. These are the highest rank of angels. They have six wings, two to cover their faces, two to cover their feet, and two to fly. These are also likely a reference to Virgil's ongoing boyhood theme of kites, which was shown most prominently in his third season. We have a really great comment about this one. Quote, apart from a brilliant revision of the tradition of ending fashion shows with a bridal look, I see these looks as a real full circle moment. His first show at Louis Vuitton opened with white looks, and this one closes with them. His whole journey at the brand starts with those clean, simple white suits and ends with these maximalist, extravagant white dresses. It's like he traversed the whole spectrum of the rainbow, starting from white as a symbol of an already clean slate of innocence and ending again with white as a symbol of wiping the slate back clean of a sweet release, even adding wings as an allusion to white doves flying off. It's just like how The Wizard of Oz starts in black and white and ends in that same black and white. But the black and white at the end has an undeniably different effect because it's tinted, so to speak, by the memories of all of that color that came before it. It really is like the end of a colorful dream. Damn, that is really well put. Okay, I wanna close this out on a piece of writing that Kai Isaiah Jamal put out right after Virgil passed. Kai is a poet who walked in many of Virgil's shows and also contributed poetry to many of them. No one can read Kai's poetry better than the poet themselves, but I'm gonna give it my best try here. The thing with Virgil was that there wasn't a thing about him. There are endless things. He was an ocean of the most beautiful things. He made any single thing possible, literally anything. After the last show, the early hours were creeping in, but we were focused in a studio in Paris. The pressure was on to push further than we did the previous show, because that's another thing about Virgil. He broke every glass roof that was over the heads of him and his. He was limitless. After the first recording, Virgil grabbed me and lifted me from the floor and said, you did it again. You provided us with the missing puzzle piece. And never before, and I doubt ever again, I'll feel so invincible, worthy, and understood. Because that's another thing about V. He understood, and what he didn't, he listened deeply and researched intently. I guess what I'm trying to say is he is a list of promises, each one he pulled through. A catalog of courage and resistance, and single-handedly one of the most kind and gentle souls I've ever had the pleasure of connecting with. Nostalgia, common in quest, running out of time, inner children, footwork, saying fuck a box, creating a whole new box, koofy caps, and a community were all frequently shared across little green bubbles that transcended countries and time zones and possibilities. Virgil taught me the power of his voice, and this the power of mine, and just what would happen if the two fused together. He put me in bronze, reminded me that everything they had ever said I couldn't do was just another reason to make work they couldn't even comprehend. He made dreams come true before we even acknowledged they were dreams. Samples are just secrets worth protecting, that's our bar. Virgil is just a genius worth protecting and that's what we will do forever, in his name and in his legacy. There are few people you will meet that will actually change your life. I'm so glad he was one of mine. I'm so glad I've had the honor to be a part of his homegrown lineage and his everlasting legacy. I never used to have icons or anyone I was just willing to put on a pedestal because how could you be so sure that they wouldn't let you down? That's your idea maybe of too much magnitude to selfishly put into a mere mortal. I don't think he'll ever be remembered as anything other than an icon. I don't think there's a pedestal high enough. Thank you for seeing what I didn't, for showing them what I couldn't. Thank you for changing the world with a symphony of smiles in an unreplicatable style. The kind that don't care for a label, just a pure soul. I love you, V. Hope you knew that. Some really beautiful words. Thank you so much for joining me. Virgil gave us a lot to be thankful for. He was an incredible artist and uh, an incredible person. I really appreciate everybody jumping in and sharing your thoughts and your analysis. I had to dig through a few thousand responses to do this analysis episode, and it was... Just, it was beyond worth it. I really enjoy doing this with all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts with me. I love you all a lot. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.